Hey everyone, this is Pat Thorne and welcome to Caregiver School. And today we're gonna to talk about creating um, a caregiver journal, which is an organizing system for the family caregiver. So um, it's, it's simple, it's easy to do, and something that'll help make your caregiving journey just a little bit more stressful. So, like, so why an organizing system? Being a family caregiver can be overwhelming. There's just, the, it's stressful. Not only are you worried about the, the health and welfare of your loved one, but managing the day-to-day -day affairs of someone can really, really create quite a burden. Just it's a lot of responsibility. So I find that caregivers who are, are organized uh, are better prepared to handle some of those crises and decisions that come up along the way. Now, this isn't just for if you're caring for someone else, you might be caring for yourself. And what a great gift that you can do to your family that if they have to step in and take care of you, that everything's all in one place. So I'm going to show you how to create, I call it a caregiver journal, all right? Um, it is uh, mostly we're going to talk about what to organize and why. And I just showed you one how. I'm going to show you one how, but uh, there are lots of ways to organize it. So um, the, the, the most important thing is that it needs to be simple and easy to maintain or you won't um, keep it up. It'll just be one more thing for you to do. You know, caregivers have very little in the way of time and money. And so a system that is too time consuming or too expensive is not gonna work. So what I'm gonna show you today is very simple and very inexpensive. Anything, just from a, uh, an envelope all the way up to a color-coded system. Which comes to, before we get started, it's really important that you understand who you are. What kind of, how organized are you? Take a look around your house. Is, are you a super organized, color-coded, cross-referenced, file everything away kind of person? Or are you more a stack at the end of the kitchen table kind of person? It's important that you don't set yourself up for failure by making a system that's too complicated or too difficult to maintain because you don't need any more stress. So today, while I'm going to show you mostly what I'm going to focus on is what to organize and why, and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you somehow from the super color-coded cross-referenced organizing system to uh, just a, a basket at the end of the table. All right. So, um, so let's get started. Let's just start some some with some basic. So let me share my screen here. Um, as you know, this is all part of Caregiver School, and you can find Caregiver School on uh, at caregiverschool.com. Um, and so this is it's Caregivers School. Dot com and this is uh, this is the student page so there's the um, there's home then there's the student this is the student page and this is where you can find all of the lessons for caregiver school so and as we go through this journal you're going to see that we'll I've cross-referenced that of the accompanying lesson because we're not going to go into detail when we talk about a advanced directives. Well, I'm not going to teach you what advanced directives are here, but I'm going to show you where to go in caregiver school to learn about that. So this is caregiver school. And so this journal, let's talk about the journal. A journal can be found under the bookstore. And in the bookstore, you'll see I have a couple of um, resources here. Let's give it a minute to load. Okay, so here is the bookstore. And this is the workbook that accompanies the caregiver school. Caregiver school has um, each each lesson has a worksheet, um, you, which you can print um, for free, or you can purchase the workbook where they're all together. We're going to come back to that caregiver resource book. That's a free gift. But here is the caregiver journal, and you'll see there are three versions here. There is a one-page guide, which is free. There's a twelve 
page student workbook, which has all of the instructions um, for caregiver school, and then the full journal, which has the instructions and the forms. Today, I'm going to, we're gonna go through this so you'll see all of the, the forms and not just the instructions, but also all of the forms that I have. So that's in this, the full caregiver journal um, that I'll, I'll show you what's included in just, just the student workbook and then the, the one page guide, all right? So let's get started. So let's come back over here to, let me find, um, let me switch what I am presenting and, All right, so this is the, again, this is the full journal, um, the, the, the caregiver journal, All right? And this is, this, what, what we're going to work through has all of the instructions and the forms, okay? So the caregiver journal. But the, the one-page guide, this is the one-page guide, which is free. So this is what you'll see for one page, the one page guide. And this tells you what to organize and why. And then you can figure out how it works best for you, how to organize it. But this is the, the list of things that you need to be gathering and thinking about and why you, and we'll talk about why you need it. Um, but this uh, is free to download, okay? Um, so let's just talk about some general instructions keep it simple or you're not going to maintain it, okay? I suggest using a three-ring binder with notebook paper so you can add information as you need it. And also you can arrange the sections. You'll notice as we go through it, the sections aren't numbered. There isn't a, there isn't a set order that or you determine what's most important. You know, maybe the calendar's in the front or maybe medications are in the front. It doesn't matter. In a binder, you can move them as you need them. Uh, I know my mom, uh, we, had, um, we had a caregiver journal put together for her, which was organized one way, but then she had to have home health for some um, physical therapy. So a section on plan of care and notes moved to the front because that was what she was dealing with at that moment. So a three ring binder, but, but if, and so you can use, um, so I showed you um, a binder like this, at least an inch, if not um, maybe two inches, it just sometimes you don't want them too small or too big, they get bulky. But another idea is these trapper keepers, which is a binder, which is a binder, but then it zips so that nothing falls out. And you got to find out that that's really important because you, when you're gathering things. Um, so that's, you can do a binder or these um, accordion file folders. This one happens, again, make sure it zips or it closes, okay? An accordion file, this is also, if you don't want to do a binder, this is another way to organize things. Um, here's that same idea. I have it all. I have it all um, created. I color coded it um, because it just makes it easier to read about, uh, uh, easier to see what which section is what by by having the different colors. Colors is a really good visual prompt. But if that's way too much, you know what? A basket and a file folders. I have these just. Staple, you know, I just have them clipped together just for demonstration. Just there's a file for each of the sections. And stick the papers in there. And this is what sits at the end of the kitchen table or in the desk in the office. If you do this, you're still far ahead of it being scattered all over the house. At least it's in one place. All right. So three ring binder, keep it simple. Use um section dividers, use pencil, there's um, uh, pocket folders. I love pockets and you're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about why I love anything with pockets and um, because it's a great place to store loose papers, temporary documents, that thing you, that appointment card you got that you haven't had time to update. In this binder, do not keep any financial information in here and only keep copies of forms 
if you don't feel comfortable having originals of things, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but don't keep any financial information in here. This is really about medical care and day-to-day -day care. We call it custodial care, like who's uh, um, uh, just day-to-day -day care. So to create this caregiver journal, the binder system, okay, um, these are some of the supplies, a one or two inch binder with a clear cover. Why I like a clear cover is it's another pocket to store stuff in. Um, some notebook paper or a spiral binder, a, spi a spiral notebook, um, things that have, that are already, um, already already punched the three punch all right um i like pencil because appointments change phone numbers change information changes and pencils can be erased i like mechanical pencils because the points don't break um but a good eraser so a pencil with a good eraser um it, these uh tabbed dividers okay they usually come um, you'll need eight, um, and again, I like them that are clear, but also that have these pockets, all right? A, uh, a one, you'll need one file folder with uh, pockets, and they usually are three-hole punched already, okay? And this is, you're gonna keep um, your advanced directives in here if you decide to. Um, something else I like to add to the binder is a pencil pouch, because that's where you keep the pencil and post-it notes all right some nice to haves are um a three-hole punch so as you get forms and papers that don't are that aren't pre-punched or you printed off your computer i got this from the dollar store it's a three-hole punch but also one of these little handy things okay so something to punch holes i like um these clear sheet protectors that you can keep some uh because just especially with a binder the holes the, the paper can get torn if they're moved around a lot so i like these sheet protectors um this is this these things are really kind of cool they're very expensive because you have to buy a lot of them but to things that hold business cards but they can also hold the prescription drugs uh, form we're going to talk about that when we get to that, all right? So those are some basic supplies, but as we go through it, you create whatever system, but to 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 create this, that's this, those are the supplies that you'll need. And this list is included in the student workbook. Again, the free guide is just that one page that has the different uh, sections and the 12 page student workbook has the instructions. So this is included in the workbook and the journal has all of these pages, okay? um all right so let's get started let's see so we covered the instructions we covered the supplies so now let's go through each section all right this is a form that would be in the in the journal it's not included in the workbook it's a form that you put at the beginning this is what you'd put in your one of the sheet protectors in the front okay and these are the different sections that we're going to go through now um we're gonna go through these um, in detail and order, but as you're putting your journal together, you're gonna to wanna to focus on what, um, what sort of what works for you, what makes, what makes sense for you. Um, you might want to organize, um, uh, you don't have to organize it in this order, and some things you're gonna gather as you go. I would recommend you start with medications first because that's something that you do daily. So I would work on that section first. And then, I, um, then I'd get a handle on your time as far as a calendar. Um, and then advanced directives. If you do not have them and you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to want to move this in, in a priority and do this one sooner rather than later. Um, but if you already have them, it's just a matter of finding them and putting them in here, okay? And some of these other things like notes and contacts and resources, you're gonna be gathering um, as you go, All right? But we're gonna, we're gonna talk about each section in, in order, okay? 
So, again, this is a form, and this is a form just to make your book look pretty. And this is the set of instructions. So, calendar. So, now, calendar, this is, um, where did I put my, here it is. Um, this is a calendar I got at the dollar store. It already has holes in it. And, um, a, a calendar, just keep track of doctor's appointments, dentist, labs. If you're taking care of somebody, it can be uh, overwhelming trying to fit that into your schedule. So um, many people will use the calendar on their phone, um, which is great, except, I don't know about you, but you can't see all those little dots. So if you can, um, then I would recommend you print it out at like a month at a glance so that you can kind of see like, oh, we're going to the same part of town uh, three times in one week. And so, uh, or, oh, we've got our, you know, that, that doctor's appointment is the same day as my kid's school play. I've got to find someone to take her for a ride, um, take a you know, driver. Um, that's why I like, uh, you know, a week at a glance that you can really see where you're spending time. If you're a care, family caregiver, you're going to want to make sure you have time for yourself. Schedule some time for yourself. Use pencil so that you can easily, you know, revise information, add new ones. Use the notes section. We're going to talk about that more. The notes section to include any special instructions to and from the doctor. Um, and on the calendar, like, oh, don't, you know, if, if there's going to be lab work tomorrow and you're not, and you can't eat for 12 hours, well, you need to know that the night before. So things like that call to arrange uh, if transportation is needed. And then I would bring this binder to all your doctor's appointments so they can review your medications and write out special instructions. So that is the calendar. You can create the system that works best for you, but get a hold of your time, right? Um, and as you go through uh, some of the other sections, you're gonna go back to the calendar and add those notes to the calendar. Next is medical information. And this uh, this section, again, this is a form. Um, this section is about basically your medical insurance, who's going to pay for this, and who's providing the care, and why they're providing the care. So in this section, you're going to want to have a copy of um, all of your insurance information. I am a... Um, healthcare provider in my counseling practice. People pay with insurance and there are things I need in order to get paid. And so I need copies of insurance cards. I usually need a photo ID to verify identity. Um, and I need the back of the card because sometimes the front of the card says one insurance company, but I've got to bill the back of the card. So it's important so that I can get paid. There's things that you'll want to include um, in this book. Um, when I was helping my mom, I needed some of that information because I would handle, there was a billing issue. She was having a problem with, there was a bill she didn't understand. So I had, was helping her with that. Well, to get that information, I needed to have, um, to, to make that phone call, even though I was her authorized representative to get past, you know, to get to talk to somebody, I still had to have that information. All right. So, um, so it's in, in this section, you want to have um, what in, what insurance you have, but also um, it's it's important to have a, a, a copy of your recent, uh, your medical history and maybe a recent doctor visit. Doctors are now required to do what's called electronic medical records, which means everything has to be computerized. And always at the end of a visit, they will ask you if you want a copy of your visit notes and say yes every single time and have them printed out, then use your little hole punch to stick it in this book because it will always have uh, your history, the diagnosis, a summary of the visit while you were there. And usually they'll send you and help include a list of medications, which will be needed when we do the next section. Okay. It's um, if you can't, if you forget, if you leave the doctor's office and you forget to get the visit notes, you usually can go onto um, their website. It's, most of them have a thing, a, a program called my chart and you can go and see the visit note and print it out. Um, it, I would include it in the in the book. I would, I would have it here in, in hand, um, uh, a copy of it. Um, under the uh, contact information, you're gonna wanna include 
all the names of the doctor and who, uh, who's taking care of you and how they get in touch with that. But also if there's a my chart, that means there's a my chart login and there's a my chart password. So you're going to need all of that information too. Under the and, then, and that gets included under contacts. As I said, some of these sections like the contacts and the notes and the resources, you're going to be adding that information as you come across it. All right. Um, so if you want to learn more about um, um, medical insurance and medical care, this is the, uh, the, the, the link to the caregiver school lesson. So I cover this in detail in part four and also go over some of these issues here in part six in day-to-day -day care caregiving. So this page is in the instructions and it's included in the student work journal workbook. This is a form that you can use. And here's where it's just a prompt to put a photocopy of a driver's license, Medicare card, secondary insurance or supplemental card, an advantage plan card, um, even someone who has an Advantage plan, they ha they will also have a Medicare card. So you want you don't want to keep the originals in here. The originals need to stay with the person. They need them on. I mean, they need to be carrying their original insurance cards on their person so that when they need it. And this is just copies. Okay, here. And this would be a form that I would. Um, that you could make a photocopy and then that's what you put in maybe one of these plastic sheets. Okay. Again, this is a form. Um, if you don't under know what I'm talking about with all of this, you got to go to back to caregiver school and where I talk about um, medical insurance and the difference of Medicare between a supplemental plan and an insurance plan. And also I'm going to show you how I've, I've done a webinar on this and I've walked you through how to go onto medicare.gov and navigate this whole world. So I will show you how to do connect to that at the end of this webinar. Again, this is a form to fill out and medical insurance, this is to make sure medical providers are paid. So Medicare, um, when someone has Medicare, I need, to, I need to know these different things because some of these, they are separate, they, you, they, they get billed separately. Okay, everybody will have part A, but not everybody will have, everybody should have part B, but they don't always have part B. So um, all of this is so that a provider can get paid. And so if, if you're working through a billing information, you're gonna wanna have that information so that you can work through those things. Um, also, when you go to a doctor's appointment, you have all that information for them when they, when they set up an account, all right? And this is just some other important medical information. Um, about allergies and implanted devices and things like that. So that's the medical um, section, okay? It's just basic medical care. Um, who's paying and what are you going to the doctor for? Medications, all right, medications. Again, this is a form and these are the instructions in, um, in caregiver school in lesson two of managing, of navigating the medical world. I go in detail about managing medication and I, medications and I teach you how to do a medication audit okay and which is reviewing all the medications and getting a really good handle on uh, on medicines uh, medical mismanaging medications causes serious side effects and is more of an issue than most people realize so um, when you're organizing the medications, you're going to want to talk about a daily dispensing system. So what, how are you going to take medications daily? Never, ever take medications right from a, pers a, a, from a, a bottle if it's something you take on a regular basis because you won't remember if you took it that morning or not. If it's something you're just taking when you get like Tylenol, you take it when you have a headache, then you know you took it. But if it's something you have to take every day, then you want to have a separate dispensing system. I go over this in detail in caregiver school, and I have a webinar where I demonstrate that. And I show you different ways to have a, a daily dispensing system, and whether that's, and if you don't like these sort of ugly, if you think these 
look too hospital and ugly, then there's ways to get really creative and creating your own little system. I have these, this is so that they're two different shapes so that you can tell the difference between maybe day and night and make sure you just, just make sure you label them. But also, you know, little spice jars, things, if, you know, uh, organize it and then make it pretty so that it's out and you can see it and you know what you're taking. So there's lots of ways to organize the daily dispensing of medication. And then you're going to want to have some sort of container or box or bucket or something that has all of the actual prescription bottles in here, right? So you're going to want to keep that, um, uh, all of the, the bottles separate and then the the, you'll fill the daily dispensing system. So now that brings us to this medication section. So in this medication section in the book, um, this is after you've done an audit, you're going to want to, um, part of the audit is to get, is to put a good list together. When you've gone to the doctor, a lot of times they will print out a list of your medications. That's that's what you'd put in this section in this section of your journal is that list of medications after you've double checked that make sure that the, the medications you physically are in possession of match the list what you're actually taking on a daily basis is what's on the list so that it's correct so after you've done an audit and you know that everything is good now we're going to have a list you're going to want to keep a list in this book so in the the journal i've created several um several forms so in the this is the in the, the full journal here is the medication audit um this is not included this audit form is not included in the work in the um is not included in the student workbook for the journal but you can go to caregiver school and print this out but that's but it's included in the journal but this is the medication audit talk about clearing everything out organizing it all set up some reminders you want to look at those bottles and see how many refills when you need to refill that's when you're going to go back to the calendar and say oh you know we're going to run out of medication refill this before then give yourself time because um pharmacies get backlogged and they're not always um they may not have it in stock so you want to give them um notice also again as i talk in in the audit is to maybe set up some auto automatic renewals but the big thing is when you need to have the prescription renewed it's one thing to get it refilled but if you've run out of refills then the doctor has to write a new doctor's order and you have to get that re, re the prescription renewed and sometimes that requires a doctor's visit, and sometimes that's just a phone call, but multiple phone calls. So those are things you wanna you'll wanna make a note of, and add to the calendar, and remind yourself the next time you've got to have that prescription um, renewed. So that's a medication audit. So here's a form um, where you can write out um, the the medication list. So these are the, this is the information you're gonna to wanna to keep track of the, um, so that you can renew a medication, okay? Um, you can uh, handwrite this, fill this in, but what I would recommend is whenever you get a, um, a prescription, whether it's through the mail or through uh, at the pharmacy, you get one of these little, these they, this tag that hangs on the outside of the bag, and it has usually two, extra pieces that are the exact label that's on the that, that has all the same information that's on the bottle so you can tear one off and you can staple it attach it to this page and that's what gets put inside your your book so this is one form i have one option um you can just do a a running list and basically you want to have all the, th the information that's on that um that um bottle label which is the name and usually you'll take i'm taking lipitor well you might not actually be taking lipitor you're probably taking the generic for lipitor and so you, gotta, you want to know what that is and what it's for who prescribed it how often you're taking special instructions is take it on an empty stomach or take it with food or take it at night any kind of special instructions so this is a form where you can fill that out if you can't um 
printed out from the doctor. Uh, this, you, un unless you tell the doctor and they've added to this, to, to their medication list, but you want to keep track of any over-the-counter vitamin or herbal supplements that you're taking and why you're taking them, okay? Sometimes the doctor tells you to take, oh, take CoQ10 or something. Well, that's an over-the-counter, but he will have prescribed it. It, it doesn't require a, uh, um, an order. You don't have to get it from a pharmacy, but um, it is prescribed. So that's probably going to be on the list. But if you're taking a vitamin or if you're taking some sort of herbal supplement, you want to make sure you include this on here. Um, and why I want you to have all this in, in the uh, copies of, of your medications in this binder is you're going to take this binder to the doctor and you're going to have them review it and make sure that you're, you're taking what you're supposed to be taking. So that's the medications. Communication notes is the second, is the next section. And basically this is just things I've got to tell other people. Remember to tell the doctor or for the doctor to, uh, or for the caregiver or for other people who are involved in the care. So in the um, workbook, this is the instructions. You want to have notes and they can just be, it can just be a notebook like this that has notes to tell the doctor, um, a place for the doctor to write some, some notes back, okay? If you have, if you're sharing caregiver responsibilities, maybe several siblings are taking care of somebody um, that, and, and somebody's taking over for someone, or you have a hired caregiver that, or someone that comes in, as just some special instructions. You know, mom had a rough night. She didn't sleep very well. She might be tired today. Or from the caregiver saying, you know what, we need these more, we're, you know, we're running low on these supplies. Also, you know, as, as a family caregiver, ask for help. Ask for help. If there's something that somebody else can do to free up your time, ask for help. So here's, here's a place for you to say, hey, I need someone to help um, take her to the doctor or go to the store or, um, or, you know, something, you know, cut the lawn or uh, replace a light bulb, whatever, some help. And then people will come by to visit to say, here, this is what I could do. You know, I can cut the lawn for you. I can bring, I can go food shopping for you, or I can take you to the doctor. Okay. So those are things that you'd be included in this, in this communication, this notes section. In the, the journal, these are forms. These are pre-printed forms that you can do. I would highly recommend you do something like this for the doctor because in between doctor's visits, you've got to talk about symptoms, side effects, changes. Um, be very specific. You know, we, 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 uh, when I have a client and we call people very poor historians. When did it start? I don't remember. I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know when that started. I've had a, couple, I've had a headache for a while now. Well, when did it start? I don't know. So the more you can, the more information you can give and how long did it last and um, to be keeping notes like that. And this is just a prompt to double check your medications before you go to the, to the, um, the doctor to check to make sure that what you're giving is what's been prescribed and that if you need any, um, um, sometimes the doctor will change a dose. And so you still have the 0.25, but now it's 0.5, so you're taking twice. And so the new prescription maybe has to have the new dose or the new frequency or something. All right. And again, for those renewals when you need the, the prescription just completely renewed. Um, and also, if, you know, I'm taking that medication, but it seems to really upset my stomach. Okay. Um, many times the doctor will just call in the prescription to the pharmacy. Uh, sometimes I feel better if you just walk out with that, you know, back in the day when you have to walk out with a like, piece of paper. Sometimes it's better if you take the prescription to the pharmacy. It's a little bit faster than waiting for them to call. But that's just, um, if did you walk out with a form or did they call it in? Okay. And then here's where the doctor can write down some special notes, you know, some instructions. Um, this is very, very important. If someone is taking someone, your loved one, to the doctor and you're not there and they don't, and so this way the doctor can write down those instructions and maybe what has to happen next. You know, go for lab work in two weeks and don't forget you can't eat for 12 hours. Um, so this is... Uh, um, a place to get some notes from the doctor. 
all this is you can also with the electronic medical records you can go online and this should he should have he or she the doctor should have included that in their visit summary and so if you walk out with that paper it will have those those instructions so if you know come back in two weeks in two, you know a month or two months or whatever but um sometimes it's it's not a bad idea to have the doctor write it out okay so that's the communication note for the doctor and this is to and from a caregiver you know um any any notes that you need to remind the person who's taking care of them and if the caregiver is noticing anything of of concern okay and then this is kind of this is a, a communication note about help if you it, this is really really important if to ask for help and you know to be specific because people say i i i, I will offer help and so if you if you can be real specific when they offer what you what they need and then someone if they see it they can tell you oh i can do that and and how to contact them so that's a form that's included in the full journal all right important contacts oh my goodness this is so so important um who takes who do you need to call how do you contact providers um uh specialists uh friends neighbors people at organizations uh, how do you how do you get in touch with all those people most times people have phone numbers in a cell phone okay one in this um do you have the pin do you know how to get into the phone and do you know what to look for i remember my mom when she had her hip replaced and she came home she was in rehab for a while and then she was going to be home and she said oh there's a group at my church and they help and they take people to doctor's appointments and they bring them food. That's great. You just have to call Mary at church. Well, you know, Mary at church, how do you find that on her cell phone? Like, so we needed Mary's last name and we needed a phone number and okay, it's, it's that church, right? You, that's the one like the one you go to all the time or the one you go to every now and then. Um, so, um making sure you have all of those inform that information and most important don't forget about pins and internet and logins and passwords um if you have to take if you have to um get information for people like so um like the my chart how do you get into you, that's a great idea pat i'm gonna print out the the medications from the my chart but i don't know how to get into my chart i don't know what how what she set up don't include in this any uh, financial or banking information access when I, when you're doing passwords and things like that. I want to talk about that in another section, right? Use pencil because passwords and names of help passwords change. Oh my goodness, all the time. Passwords change all the time. So um, so that stuff changes. So these are forms. So again, this isn't the instructions that's included in the student workbook. And here is a form and it's just, a way to jog about your memory about all the people that you hadn't even thought you might need to write down okay um healthcare providers who takes care of your specialist the dentist your eye doctor hearing medical supply company home health company others so that's the medical provider service providers these are paid you know who's is there a caregiver is there an attorney is there an accountant um, what about a pastor, you know, uh, your church, financial advisor, who cleans the house, who, uh, who repairs? This is a list uh, who does repairs, lawn care, pet sitter, plumbing, other, just, just jogging your memory about what numbers might be important in your loved one's care. Again, notes, contacts, and resources are all things that you will be adding to over time, all right? And as you get some of these, um, you know, maybe the agency, so this is volunteer, there's agencies, maybe the brochure to the to that agency that's helping with the Meals on, you know, like Meals on Wheels. Oh, we found out about Meals on Wheels and we used it that one time. And so now we've got that brochure and guess what? That brochure can go in for these, these pockets. Just like, let me come back to the medications. Oh, I got a new prescription. I got I to gotta add it to that list. So pockets, so these things, that's why I love these pockets. Okay, so this is just, again, this form is just to jog your memory about things that you might need to be making sure you know how to get in touch with, you know, who they are and how they help, all right? And then password, pin, and internet access. Can you get into the person's cell phone as you're waiting till they're asleep and you're 
you know, grabbing their thumb, right? Their computer, laptop, email, voicemail, alarm code, medical insurance, um, that would and online medications, my chart, doctors, medical records, social media accounts, all these things that uh, you don't, you, things you need to be thinking about as you start to get um, uh, more involved in someone's day-to-day uh, -day care. Some of these things, like I took care of my mom and most of these things I didn't need, I didn't need, we didn't need to write down. I just, I knew where she kept some of this information if something happened to her, but, um, but other things I did need. Plan of care section. So this is a section, um, again, that's, that's just a form, but this is the instructions. So plan of care is basically who's gonna do what and when and how we're gonna pay for it. When I worked in hospice and when I would see people in nursing homes or assisted living and, and or home health, they have a binder, which is what I crafted this system based on is the binders that I used that we used to have to maintain for every every client and uh, everything in it and the plan of care was for home health you know the physical therapist is going to come this many times and the nurse is going to come this many times and they're going to do this and this is what we this is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it I highly encourage family members to really make a plan of care you don't have to fill out a form but it's important to know what's going to happen next i'm working with family you know i've worked with families where someone's in early stages of alzheimer's and you need to really be making a plan for when that person is going to become more and more disabled okay and so this is the link to caregiver school and where i talk about specifically um how to uh how to create a do a needs assessment and then creating a plan of care this this page is in the student workbook okay so you, you want to download these worksheets and um complete the documents and that's what will go in this section um but in the full journal i already have them included so this is the plan of care checklist and plan a is what's working right now what's being done now by whom when who's paying for it and when 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 is it needed Okay, um, and then next is Plan B, which is the 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 in a normal course. What are the anticipated changes? You know, at some point we might not be able to drive. At some point they might not be able to live alone. At some point they might not be able to um, maintain the house. So um, anticipated changes. When and how will we know when it's time to make a change? And plan C is that crisis, like, okay, now what do we do? We weren't planning on this, okay? So that's the plan of care um, checklist. And then this is, in this again, it's this, this is included in the, the journal. Um, and this is the assessment form where I go through in detail everything you need to be thinking about. And I want you to be evaluating it on a scale of fully independent to completely um, dependent. You know, um, and um, you know, someone that has a diagnosis of macular degeneration is someone that eventually will not be able, will be visually impaired. So, what, what, while they can still see, what things are we going to be putting in place? How are we going to anticipate, um, and what are we going to be, be doing? Uh, to prepare for that, okay, mobility, activities of daily living, toileting, hygiene, dressing, that kind of stuff, household chores, you know, this might not apply, maybe they live in an apartment, maybe they live with you, um, so medical issues, um, medications, okay, home safety, um, legal and financial issues, the, the care, the, so I want you to be thinking about these documents, but they're not going to be included in this binder. A will won't be included. A financial power of attorney will not be included um, in, a, in any of these documents. We're going to talk about that again, but but this is a checklist for you to start thinking about what do you need to gather? What do you need to learn? What needs to be assessed? Is there some, is there some need? Okay. All of, and I go through all of these things all throughout caregiver school. So, 
So that's the plan of care. You may or may not have a plan of care. If you are taking care of yourself, to put a plan in place of like, I know that I want to stay in my house for as long as possible, but after a certain point, I've already looked into it and I want to hire someone, or this is, I'm going to move to this um, uh, apartment complex that has some um, uh, services, uh, senior living that has some, some services, or this uh, agent, this facility that has a lot more assistance. If you will do your family uh, a great blessing if you can uh, identify a plan and put it in here. If, I, and I talk about this in um, caregiver school, if you are a family caregiver and you're being paid to, to do, to be, to be the caregiver, which many, many families do that. They, they uh, the, uh, I, have a, I have a family that the one sibling is taking on the care and at some point she'll need to quit her job to do the full-time care because dad's got a dementia. Um, and so at that point, mom and dad will be paying her. And so it's, um, we talked about putting together a caregiver agreement, which, which documents what she's going to do and how she's going to be compensated for that, um, that work and when other people need to step in. And, and if, you know, if uh, if I'm agreeing to do the day to day care, but I need a brother to handle the finances and someone else is going to handle the home maintenance to have that written out. And that's where you would include this in the plan of care. All right. So this is kind of a, a section you can get real creative with advanced directives, which uh, advanced directives are any instructions you put in advance of an event happening. In this section, you're only going to keep a copy of medical advanced directives, things having to do with medical or custodial care. So um, you, I would, you can keep, it's, this is just depending on your level of comfort, uh, but this would be the file folder. You'd put these in. Um, you can just put copies in here and keep originals elsewhere. Some people just, with my mom, we just kept her originals in here because it, it, we just, then we found it and we didn't have to think about it. Um, but so it, that's just completely up to you of what you want, if, if, if um, where they are. Mostly it just needs to be in a safe place. So if this binder is a safe place, a safe accessible space. So if this binder is the safe accessible space, that's great. But if um, if it's kept with other documents, again, not we're not going to keep any le any other legal or financial documents in this binder. So if it's kept with those, so these are advanced directives that would be that are medical, a living will, a medical power attorney, and anything having to do with funeral, burial, or other final arrangements. Um, the um, if this is the lesson to caregiver school where I talk about what's a living will and how to prepare these. I also have a webinar on, um, at my, my YouTube channel, uh, Caregiver School, where I go in depth and I show you how to find these forms and how to fill them out, okay? So you'll want um, uh, to have that information in this binder. Again, whether you keep the originals or just copies, that's just, Again, some of this, how you organize it is completely up to you. Just be able to put your hands on them. Um, so again, this is a form. This is not included. This this is the instructions that's included in the in the um, workbook. And this is a form. And it's just a prompt to help you remember if you have it and where it is. Um, and a couple of things that's important that people know if you want to donate your organs, if you have a do not resuscitate, do not resuscitate that. You definitely don't want that original. Just like insurance cards, you don't want originals in this. Originals are with the person. So the do not resuscitate. I go into in, in, in detail on, on do not resuscitates. And also there's a pulse to physician's order standing care or something. Um, it's another um, medical directive that you'd want to have. Um, just you need to think about where, what's the best place for that to be. Okay. Um, I do not resuscitate is really unusual for someone um, to have until they're at end of life. All right. And 
Then funeral and other arrangements, just this is really important that this just be a place like I have a will, who the executor is, and oh, the attorney, okay? If they want to donate organs, if they want to be cremated, this is really important just because um, this, uh, um, uh, that's something that a funeral home can't undo. So they want to make sure that if someone wants to be cremated, that it's it's specified. Military benefits, if anything's been prepaid, if there's a family burial plot, if there's an insurance policy, um, what funeral home you want to use, if there's a cemetery, uh, again, more details about the funeral insurance policy, and then specifics about a memorial service. Um, be, as a family caregiver, be aware the funeral home wants will want to be paid at the time of the service you will not get death certificates until they are paid so it's like yep it's great oh mom's got an insurance policy that'll cover the cost of the in, of the funeral you can't claim on the insurance until you produce a death certificate you can't get the death certificate until you pay the funeral home so you need to have that within your financial plan that you have a way or a means to pay for the the um, insurance the, the funeral at the time and then get reimbursed. So many families end up putting it on a credit card. And then when that uh, insurance policy comes through, they get reimbursed. Again, I just had a, it, 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 it happens all the time. And so just be aware that you have to have a way to pay for the funeral at the time of the funeral. Right, but this is where you would just keep this is a form that's included in the full um, journal that has you thinking about all this stuff. And then the last section is resources. You know, what are the resources that, that you're using? You know, who can I call? That area on aging probably has is the one that has um, people that will take um, take people to our area on aging will have people that will take people to the doctor. Um, they will deliver the home delivered meals. They may have some light housekeeping services. Um, to uh, the Alzheimer's Association has tremendous resources available. Medicare, um, the VA, Social Security. Here's my caregiver school. So this this particular one page is included in the student workbook. Um, but also coming back to let me go to. In, uh, in the bookstore of Caregiver School is the, um, is this free uh, resource book. And this has all of the resources. It's organized two ways. It's organized um, because it's a companion to the Caregiver School. So it, the front of it is organized and that lines up as the lessons are presented. And then the back of the resource book, it's just alphabetically. I'm looking for Medicare, and so I'm going to look under M. All right, so, but this is a free book, and so I recommend that you um, download it and print it out and put it in your binder. So I think I have covered um, everything. Again, this is the, uh, the bookstore. Um, this is how you can download the, the one-page guide, okay, which is free. Then the 12-page student workbook, which just has the instructions, what you need to do for each section, and a link to caregiver school, and there are forms over there. And then this, um, this is the full caregiver journal, which has all the pre-printed forms. You'll download this, and then you can just print the forms as you need them and need to replace them. Right, so that is the caregiver journal. Let me talk about one thing that I didn't include in this, but I really want you to be thinking about is, you know, this is organizing all of the medical and day-to-day -day care, but it's really, really important that you get a handle also on the legal and financial um, documents and paperwork. So in caregiver school, let me come back to caregiver school over here, um, I want you to under under um, 
part five, legal and financial, is to print out this checklist. And this goes through this um, has, uh, so that you are, start to gather and organize and identify all of these, this paperwork that you might need to have bank accounts, login information, account numbers, credit cards, bills, all of that. Um, the, the contact information forms, you may want to cre start creating a list of who's the, who, of, of login passwords and things like that, or find, you know, we all have that little book, the little cheat sheet, I'll find that. Um, but uh, identifying the legal documents that you might need and the names of some key contacts. So again, that would be a, a something that you'd want to keep separate and secure and separate from the uh, caregiver journal, but it's very, very important um, handling the business, making sure bills and things can be paid, right? So I just wanted to share that before we go. So again, the caregiver journal um, is a simple instructions to, you can create a simple uh, binder system uh, where you have everything. If that's too much, then maybe just pockets just everything medical goes here everything legal goes here all right but even if you don't do that then maybe it's just a basket whatever works for you keep it simple don't stress about it gather the information over time if you have any questions reach out to me pat at patthorn.com i'd be more than happy to help you uh get organized all right and so I think that about covers it. So um, remember to take care of yourself. And um, in the meantime, know that there's help for the journey. Take care.